and welcome to my channel Hades Corner with me Heidi and as always my lovely co-hosts are today as always Stefan as well, and with him is Bertil Aww. okay and very very much welcome for joining me and thank you before we go any further I would like to remind you that I appreciate it very very much if you like or th thumbs up thumbs down I really don't care uh, subscribe and tickle the notification bell you know just give it a gentle nudge bludge to get all notifications for future content one to check the links in the description box below you can find wonderful wonderful links with uh, links to my other playlists uh, my patreon there is a very special offer on patreon until uh, the 22nd of October you have the possibility of getting my my personally written postcard delivered to you if you join by the 22nd of, of October uh, to my patreon and there is also a link to my PayPal for um, a more one-time offer or one-time uh, donation you can do that on uh, also on PayPal welcome to my channel once again uh, to another episode of culture corner this time this week Monday I will be taking on Silvia Rivera uh, Silvia Rivera is a um, uh, a Latina trans trans transvestite uh, would be uh, considered probably transgender these days uh, she was a very close a good friend of Marsha P. Johnson of whom I've made a video about uh, I highly recommend of checking that out uh, after this one okay so uh, this is uh, even though this is history a historical uh, <laughs> Sylvia is already dead unfortunately uh, but she had a fun fundamental effect on how we see and perceive trans trans activism uh, in now in modern in modern times okay so who was Silvia Rivera really what's her legacy what was her activism like we'll find out so about her background as I uh, as you can probably deduce from her name she has a latina background she would be i think if i'm not completely mistaken classified as latina uh, her her birth father was jose rivera a puerto rican man and her her mother was a was a venezuelan immigrant as well uh, she was born to Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican and uh, Venezuelan parents in New York City on July 2nd in 1951. So she would be the, quite, quite, a, quite well, quite well aged at, at this point if she was alive, but unfortunately she is not. Her uh, birth father Jose uh, abandoned her when at a very 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 young age uh, and she and Sylvia was raised by her 
maternal grandmother because Sylvia became an orphan at the age of three when her biological mother killed herself. So hence had to be uh, raised by uh, a relative or, so, or some other person. And given given the background of um most likely i would i would assume that her 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 latina her latina latina family would have been um catholic or at least very religious uh well most likely catholic uh since it, her family background is in uh is south american and from the Caribbean, from her father was from Puerto Rico, so uh, it's no surprise that uh, Silvia's uh, grandmother disproved of of her of Silvia's feminine effeminate behavior or that kind that type of behavior, if you will, um, especially when she started wearing makeup at the uh during the time she was in her fourth in the fourth grade uh in elementary school so that is quite early especially knowing that her her family uh would or rather at this point i as i understand it her only family at this point would would have been her uh maternal grandmother uh as, and as as a um result of very tough situations situation at home uh rivera began living on the streets of new york city in 1961 uh at the age of 11. uh of course uh she had to get uh food shelter clothing etc from very early on um so unfortunately she had to resort from from an early age she had to resort in, in what is called survival sex uh in order to get to get um as i said food shelter clothing because especially knowing if you can happen to consider that uh, new york city is is um is north enough north enough that the hudson river if i'm not completely mistaken the the water is very close to zero zero or very zero degrees celsius which is the freeze uh, when uh, the when water freezes so you need so that means the air it, air is cold in the winter you need clothing you need uh, warmth uh, shelter that, so you don't freeze to death and so on and at uh from a young age she was uh Sil sylvia was also taken in by the local the nyc rag rag community and what was there by them given the name of sylvia and she as i me mentioned earlier she identified as drag queen but she uh, what she defined that doesn't but what her she identified herself as would uh, mostly correspond to being to what is now uh transgender but it wasn't in in white use back in the day okay but anyway it's it's um unclear unclear regardless whether or not 
she really was uh, uh, tra uh, transgender or just uh, gender non gender non conforming. So go figure. Uh, she's long gone now, so it's can't. It's really tough to tough to tell uh, for sure. But there are interviews about her, and I haven't gone through all of them, obviously. But I, but she has probably taken some stand, but not what I, not that I find on a very quick, quick search. Her, her, um, work as an activist started, as I said, from a somewhat early, early age. She was 17 at the time of Stonewall. Uh, Stonewall riots in 1969, the summer of then early, in late June, she would have turned 18, uh, she, so she would have had a birthday uh, some, some days later, and she also took part earlier, even a bit earlier, she, and after that, obviously, she took part in the Gay Liberation Front uh, drag caucus uh, demonstrations at a young age. But uh, even though she was an active, uh, act a very active uh, activist in at the time of Stonewall, she has, uh, however, uh, exaggerated uh, her role in some fields of activism that would have been taking part in late 60s and the 70s. Uh, for example, the civil rights movement in, in the US, uh, Vietnam War, uh, feminis feminism, etc, etc, etc. But Anyway, she was also uh, very close to to a dra gay drag activist named Marsha P. Johnson. I highly recommend uh, checking checking my episode from the lists down below, the playlists down below about the the list. Uh, sorry, the video that I made about uh, Marsha P. Johnson uh her her work and life is amazing uh she she was a charming charming woman uh really um and they were, rivera and johnson were very uh, close friends and together they they co co-founded together they founded Marsha, Marsha co-founded with Sylvia the star which means which star which stands for street transvestite action revolutionaries which I uh, talked about uh, last week on my episode of uh, Thursday premiere Thursday I highly su suggest you look you check that out so it's it is a very very fascinating topic really uh, this uh, what they did uh marcia and sylvia marcia jo marcia p johnson and uh then sylvia rivera yeah so check the uh video about marcia p johnson uh as well as the uh from last week as well as the um, the episode about street transvestite action revolutionaries, aka Star, from the premiere Thursday episode this past um, Thursday, Thursday the Thursday the October fourteenth. So anyway, when it comes to the uh, Rivera's activism. Uh, she co-founded the Star with and uh, the Star, 
um, provided uh, plenty, plenty of good things. They uh, into for more detail, please check the video from last uh, Thursday, the fourteenth. But they offered uh, different kinds of services uh, at advocacy, advocacy, uh, and for example, for services, for example. Uh, housing, housing for homeless queer youth. So, what was going on in in New York City? Uh, Rivera was uh, when her activism started. She was about seventeen, eighteen years old, uh, and she had the star, and she claimed to have been an active part in the Stonewall riots, but according to a gay activist, an American gay activist, uh, Bob Kohler, who was a gay rights pioneer and, and an early activist at the Gay Liberation Front, as well as Starr, um, who was, uh, he was at the, the riots, the, the Stonewall riots for the Two, first two nights uh, uh, and he claimed that Rivera never came downtown rather uh, she hang out at Bryant Park which was in up, in uptown New York rather uh, rather than in downtown where they they had the where Stonewall Stonewall in was on Christopher on Christopher Street, New York, and her good friend Marsha, a few years older, w was actually there at the Stonewall Inn riots uh, and the uprising. She was there on the spot, and she said Johnson later um, has later stated that she did. Yes, she did meet up with Rivera but it was earlier that e earlier that night and they had drink, uh, a few drinks there up in, in uptown uh, it, Rivera was uh, of course uh, confronted by, about this issue by by Marsha but however uh many activists like uh bob Kohler, Kohler that i mentioned earlier uh from the gay liberation front for example uh and uh, uh, thomas lenniken schmidt uh were however willing to betray her being being actually at at the um uh, riots or the Christopher Street and the uprising so that young Puerto Ricans would uh, on, on who lived on the street would have uh, at least uh, some some sort of a role model for them anyway uh, after the of the star waned away uh, the dust settled after the stone walls, at least to some degree. Uh, in mid seventies, she skipped that skipped town and left uh, New York City to go and live in Terrytown, New York. And they, and there she lived with her lover, lover there. In in Tarrytown, she had quite uh, at least what I could find in at least in eighties. They at least in eighties they ran a catering service, uh, which was actually um, oh, jolly good fun. Why not? Hey, she finally got somewhere somewhere to live. Uh, she was no longer homeless. She lived with her lover. So, come on, why the hell not? 
why wouldn't you want to have a house and a lover and a, and a job having a catering service employ uh, employing yourself so i can't see why not uh so she had somewhat good life there so i'll as i said uh sylvia and marcia were, were very very close friends throughout the decades uh however marcia as i please check out the video about marcia but she passed away in july 1992 uh when she her body was uh, found washed up washed up on the shore of the hudson river in, in new york and it was classified as a as a uh, suicide but it was then refuted by friends and so it was it's now it was now reclassified some years ago to uh, un unknown reasons but please check the video right after this one you go check the marsha video okay because it's really really interesting uh anyway Rivera herself uh battled uh substance abuse as well as meant as well as she was battling mental health issues as well which often those two go go um hand in hand un unfortunately uh, of course the substance abuse had a had a really bad effects on her body obviously you can't expect to abuse dr drugs and alcohol for for who knows how long and take drugs etc etc and then expect your body to be over okay with <laughs> okay with it though so everyone just be be cautious with with substances uh, don't abuse them it's it's bad for you okay it's bad for you too okay um and those have a close connection to mental health issues which she had as well and she attempted suicide at least uh once that i could find and that was in new york in 1995 when she tried to uh, commit suicide by walking into the Hudson River where and her as I said Marsha her very good friend was found in the Hudson River uh, some some years earlier and she passed away in the early hours of the morning on February 19th 2002 at the age of 50 due to complications of liver cancer which is then obviously um a sign or one side effect of long-term especially long-term uh, alcohol use especially alcohol use is that you get tend to get or, or, or you're mo more prone to uh liver cancer when that's why you and you aren't supposed to use alcohol too well you can use in moderation do not use too much okay belgian beer is good but don't drink too much of it wine is good but don't drink too much of it so there there we go so what made her legacy culturally so important uh in social in sociology or in social culture the effect she had was very profound she created a culture of equal of of activism for equal housing equal opportunity to for everyone to have food and shelter Silvia Rivera was um, a, an active member of Metropolitan Community Church in New York. 
uh, and she was once a, a client of of the church's food aid when she was homeless and and, and piss poor uh, but eventually the church named their their food pantry after her it's called Silvia Rivera Food Pantry and their queer youth shelter is Silvia's place. Yeah, it gives me goosebumps. That because it's very unusual that for an an American church, let alone anywhere anywhere of any organization, to name their food pantries, their support the support housing for homeless youth to name these food pantries housing units and shelters uh, after a trans woman a trans woman and a sex worker it's not it's not it doesn't happen every day the podcast podcast uh called making gay history has named the season one episode one and season th three episode episode uh one so that's making gay history season one episode one season three and episode one after her it's not so it's quite an honor uh that one as well uh in 2005 the corner of christopher street where stonewall it is at, uh the corner of christopher street and hudson street where it was renamed sylvia rivera way and it's located um uh, in Gre in greenwich greenwich village in new york uh manhattan new york uh, and it's two blocks away from Stonewall Inn. And there have been several roles in plays. Uh, and play uh, several roles in plays and musicals to, that have portrayed her. Uh, for example, Jade Esteban Estrada in musical, in a solo musical, Icons, the Lesbian and Gay History of the World. There is also something called uh, Sylvia in the U.S. Uh, Sylvia Rivera Law Project, which is dedicated to um, guarantee that all people are free to self to self determine gender identity and expression, regardless of income or race, without harassment, discrimination, or violence. And that is something that Sylvia uh, herself worked for. And when she first came out as trans, whether it be transvestite or tra or transgender, regardless of that, it wasn't that easy. That was in late sixties. So it was. As I discussed with, for example, Susan Brewer, which is my first, uh, second ever live stream. Please check that out. Susan is absolutely wonderful and lovely, sweet person. Please um, check her out. Uh, she actually has a YouTube channel and I will li link it in the description box below. So I highly recommend checking her channel checking the uh, the stir and her channel her her channel the video we did and the stonewall um and the stonewall videos that i've uh made in the past they're um very very uh important uh in cultural history in history and cultural history this video will co go into the culture corner because this one, I feel, 
falls more in the culture corner culture corner bit rather than the culture corner of sorry the history with with Haiti episodes so i hope you like i hope you approve so that was it for the episode of culture corner for this week monday i hope you truly really enjoyed this episode and of course the other episodes as well uh, of the culture corner and please check the there is a play playlist link in the description box i hope you enjoy um watching the rest of the video uh the rest of the videos on culture corner videos or the or the playlists and uh I will see you in the episode of History with Haiti on Friday. Thanks for watching.